course, playing along one string is not the ideal fingering for it. There's a cool pattern that just happens to line up on the guitar. If you start on the fourth string on that E <clears throat> and go finger one, three, four, on the next string it goes one, two, four. So the pattern's one, three, four, one, two, four. On the next string, go one, three, four, one, two, four. Easy pattern, huh? Uh, one, three, four. Nice. If we play it all the way from the bottom, or if we descend all the way, when you get to the fifth string, you have to shift up a fret. But it's that same, basically two string at a time pattern. If we're going backwards, yeah. Now shift up one fret. Yep. There you go. So it goes one, three, four, one, two, four. So just like diminished chords, when you play an E diminished, it, it has the notes E, B flat, C sharp, G. If you move it up three frets, you get the same notes in a different order. G, C sharp, E, B flat. You move it up again, B flat, E, G, C sharp, and move it up again, C sharp, G, B flat. <clears throat> so this chord, when you move it around by three frets, those are all essentially the same chord. You can't really tell them apart. Like, is this an E? And is this an E in an inversion still it's still e diminished though and this is still e diminished or is it really b flat diminished there's no definitive answer for that so i started thinking of the scale here as an e but you could also call it a g a lot of guys that play diminished scale stuff there's a lot of patterns in the diminished scale because it repeats by three frets so you'll see guys do things like like that whatever lick you do you can move it up three frets and move it up three frets so especially on the guitar it's kind of a cool thing or you can see if you have like some just a shape there's all these little patterns that people do Listen to the guys that play diminished stuff. You'll uh, you'll hear guys play patterns. Even John Coltrane would do like patterns. Like these little back and forth three note, four note sequency kind of things. They sound, I think, especially cool in when you're playing diminished things. So the thing about the diminished scale is, like I said, it's very dizzying, and you can it's hard to see what to do, so try playing. See? Just playing a four note sequence, like I tried to do. It's almost like an inchworm kind of warm up, right? Here it's got some real cool possibilities. You could also do this every time you play one, three, four. Like now go straight across on the next string. And on the next string, shift again. And then straight across and shift. You get to the second string, uh, shift, you slide there. Now here, you don't go straight across, you shift up a fret, now slide. That's a sh the, it's always a slide, so you're gonna do this. Slide, slide, one, three, four.
and straight across. Slide one, three, four, straight across. Slide one, three, four, straight across. Slide one, three, four, up a fret. Slide one, three, four, straight across. I'm also hammering on three and four. So I'm doing this slide, hammer on, and then slide. Charlie Parker does this thing in, I forget what tune, but he plays. so ridiculously fast I've never been able to work it out but it's it's a diminished scale backwards he's playing all the half steps ascending so he plays this one the hard part's the shift that up to full speed it would sound really cool but even ascending sorry missed it sounds really cool so that's the diminished scale slash chord in all its glory it's super flexible it's what a lot of the jazz guys do when you hear them play like some sequ sequency sounding booly 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 stuff that seems to be almost like a rubber stamp like you play one thing and you move it down through frets and move it down through frets so whatever pattern from within you just move it down through and it sounds really cool but it's not that hard because you're just doing on the guitar you can just move 